Hey you guys, it's Mimsy here. I'm gonna show you a tutorial on how to make this simple pillowcase. It's uh, a very easy, easy project. It's the perfect project for a beginning sewer or even your children if you're trying to teach your kids how to sew. This is a super fun project. Or if you just wanna have really custom pillowcases in all the bedrooms of your house. It's super easy, super fun. Um, so let me show you how to do this. This is the burrito or the roll-up method, and um, it's easy, so let's do it. Okay, so the first step to this is to determine what size of a pillowcase you wanna make. So grab your pillow, look at the tag, um, and look at the measurements of it. Mine is a 20 by 30. It's a queen size, and um, they're not all created the same. There's not a standard pillow size, so check that out. So you'll need three coordinating fabrics. Um, this is a pillowcase that I already made, and like I said in the intro, it is the burrito or roll-up method, which allows you to not have any seams. So you see that inside, there's no seam there, it's all enclosed, you don't have to do any serging or overlock stitches to, hold, to um, close up your seams, which is the best part about this. So you're gonna take your body fabric, which is your main fabric, and I cut my body fabric to 26 inches um, and you're gonna cut for, for the length and then the width is gonna be 20 inches finished so I'm gonna cut mine 21. So right now I have my fabric folded selvage to selvage so I'm gonna cut this fabric 26 inches in length and you'll see the top of the fabric um, on the bottom of the screen. That's the selvages and the selvages are together right now. So I'm lining it up on my um, cutting mat, which I love to use a cutting mat and a rotary cutter because it makes things so fast and so accurate. But you don't need to have a cutting mat. You can obviously mark your fabric and cut with scissors just as easily. Um, this just makes it a little bit faster. So there's my body fabric cut to 20 inches and we're not going to cut the width yet um, we're going to sew it all together and then we'll cut the width all together then i'm going to take my cuff fabric which that wasn't it that was the made uh, previous pillow cover so here's my coordinating cuff fabric i like to mi mix large um, scale florals with real small scale florals i think that looks i think it looks good together with coordinating colors so the cuff fabric you're going to cut that to 12 inches by the width of the fabric, which is this 40, no, I don't know what the width of this fabric is actually, maybe 44. Anyway, um, I've got this one folded in half, selvage to selvage, just like I did the, the main fabric. So the selvages are at the bottom of the screen and I'm cutting it to 12 inches now. And setting aside my excess and there's my 12 inch piece and I will set that aside. And then I will cut my border piece, that little small piece that's between the cuff and the main fabric to two inches by the width of the fabric. So of course this one is folded the same way, selvage to selvage. The selvages are on the bottom of the screen. There you see that. So I'm cutting it to two inches. Take away the excess and I'm left with that two inch strip by the width of my fabric, which I think is 44. No, actually it might be 45 because in half it comes to about 22 and a half. Anyway, so the next step is to take this strip, this two inch strip, fold it in half, bring it to your ironing board and press it all the way down. So you see I've pressed that nice and neatly with the edges meeting up really nicely. Set that aside and pull out your body fabric, your main fabric. You are gonna open up your main fabric with the right side up. So you see, I'm gonna flip this over and um, smooth it out right side up and you'll see my selvages are now to the right and to the left. So there's my right selvage and there's my left selvage. Then you're gonna take your two inch strip, which is now folded, 
and you're gonna line up the cut edge to the cut edge of the body fabric and just line it up nice and neat so that they're lined up perfectly together because we are gonna eventually sew this. Um, so you want it to be lined up real accurately. Then take your cuff fabric, open that up, and you're gonna put that right side down. So your body fabric and your cuff fabric are gonna be right sides together. And of course your raw edge, you're gonna line it up to that same edge um, that you just lined up the, uh, the two inch strip of fabric to. smoothing it out and making sure that it's nice and flat. There's no creases or wrinkles in the layers. Grab your pins and go ahead and pin the layers of fabric. So there should be four layers of fabric there. You're gonna pin it um, side to side. So put your pins in um, horizontally with your fabric side to side. Um, don't put them in facing you or vertically because the next step is we're gonna fold this cuff fabric over and we don't want it to stick in, the pins to stick in there. So we're gonna put the pins in sideways, like I'm doing here. And then the next step is um, smooth it out a little bit more. You're gonna lift up the cuff fabric and just roll it up so that it exposes that small piece of trim. Then grab the bottom of your body fabric or your main fabric and roll it up. This is where the burrito or the roll up comes in. So roll it right up to the uh, trim fabric there, that little piece of white trim fabric. Drop that cuff fabric back over the roll. Grab the roll and the bottom and flip it over smooth out and then bring your roll of fabric to meet your other raw edge. So those four layers that you just pinned are now on the top. You're gonna bring that to meet the raw, other raw edge of the cuff fabric. Just smooth it out, make sure that those um, raw edges or cut edges are nice and straight and lined up. And now we're gonna take out that pin and repin it to include that bottom layer of fabric. And now here you can go ahead and pin perpendicular to your raw edges. So I'm gonna pin all the way down about four to six inches between the pins, just enough to, to hold it. You don't have to do too many pins, but you wanna have enough to keep it all together underneath your presser foot when you're sewing. And then the next step is to take this whole roll to your sewing machine and stitch down that edge a nice quarter inch seam. Okay, so now I've got this stitched together. I've got a quarter inch seam in there and I'm going to open up the end and you see the fabric all rolled in there. Just grab that roll and pull all that fabric out of that roll. You're basically gonna turn it all around so that your fabric is the right side out. And you see how nicely, um, it, or how nice that looks. Your cuff and your trim piece so nicely conceals the raw edges. And the next step is to go ahead, you see how nicely that edge is enclosed. There's no seam there. It's beautiful. I love that. It's my favorite part about this. It's magic. Anyway, so now we're going to put in a French seam. So what we're gonna do is fold your pillowcase in half, right sides out. So a French seam always starts with your first seam right sides out. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead at this point and now cut off our selvage edges. Um, you see now we are going to even that up because the edges with the different 
fabrics, they're not always exactly the same width, selvage to selvage, so now we'll, I'll line that up on my cutting table so that I've got a one inch seam allowance, so I'm cutting it at 21 inches. And I'll get a nice straight raw edge there to, to put my quarter inch seam in. Okay, now I'll take my um, pins again, pin all the way down the side Again, I put my pins in perpendicular. You can do them horizontally or, or parallel to the cut edge or um, perpendicular, whatever is easiest. I think in couture they do them parallel to the raw edge. And then don't forget to pin along the bottom because you're going to now sew your quarter inch seam across the bottom and across that open side. Okay, so now I've got my quarter inch seam around uh, sewn in at the bottom and the side and I'm just trimming off just a tiny little bit, about an eighth of an inch off of that seam so that when I do my French seam, um, the raw edge and the little strings that are coming off that raw edge don't peek out of my French seam. Because the next step is we are going to take this and turn it inside out and then make sure you get your corners pushed all the way out so they're nice and square. So we're gonna turn it inside out like this, take it to the ironing board and press the whole, th the seams and the whole thing. Kind of roll that seam out in your fingers and uh, make sure you get that seam nice and opened up and flat. Take it to the ironing board and, sew, and iron press that seam real flat. And then we're gonna sew another seam a quarter of an inch in along the same two seam lines that we just sewed. Making sure that you're sewing your seam past those two seam lines. So there I've already sewn that seam and you can see that it's all closed up. And that's, that's a French seam. And then I'm going to take it back to my ironing board, press that seam again, press the whole pillowcase, and that's it. It is complete. So now it's time to stuff that pillow into the pillowcase and see how the fit is. So far so good, it's nice and snug, which I like because I don't like when my pillowcases come off of my pillows, so I like them to be a bit snug. But I also like for my edge banding or my, um, you know, the band to be a little bit past the end of the pillow, like I've got here, so that my band is kind of at the end of the pillow, like that. I'd say that's a perfect fit. It's ready for my daughter's bed. I'm gonna make a few more. So that's it, you guys. Check out my next video. I'm going to link it at the bottom. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.